What have the archaeologists and historians of the world been up to recently? That's a question we ask ourselves a lot on this channel, and we've never been disappointed with the answer. There's always something new and fascinating within the worlds of archaeology and paleontology, and that means we are always able to bring you exciting videos full of wonderful discoveries like this one. Sit back and enjoy. When an amateur metal detectorist first got a positive signal in his device in a field in Wales in 2019, all he thought he'd found was an old metal chain. He couldn't have been more wrong. After he did a little digging, it became clear that he'd found a full-sized, perfectly preserved Celtic chariot burial, the first of its kind ever to be found in the country. Burials of this kind were reserved only for the most high-ranking members of Celtic society usually tribal chiefs, who went to their graves with their chariots, weapons, riding tack, and even their horses. It's now hoped that there might be an Iron Age settlement somewhere nearby, so this is a significant discovery that could yet lead to the discovery of something even more significant. Mike Smith, the metal detectorist responsible for the find, was misled at first because the only part of his discovery poking out of the ground was part of a bridle bit, which he mistook for a medieval brooch. In reality, this find is closer to 2,600 years old. It's likely that the burial was once covered by a mound, but the mound was flattened by farmers plowing their fields without ever realizing there was ancient treasure lurking beneath them. When our next discovery went viral on the internet in 2019, most people assumed it was a hoax. That's because they'd only seen an artificially recolored image and not the original pictures. It's a tomb discovery from China, which, as many people on social media noted, appeared to be marked with the logo of the Xbox gaming console. Even the official Xbox Twitter account commented on the discovery, congratulating gamers on unlocking the achievement of discovering the Xbox 220 BC. It's almost a shame that the discovery got derailed in this way because it's actually a fascinating and challenging find. While it might not really have a green and silver color scheme, it's a genuine X-shaped ancient Chinese tomb, and experts believe it was made in the years before the Qin Dynasty. That means it's more than 2,200 years old. Nobody has any idea why the people of that era might have built a tomb so large, or why there's a colossal X on its exterior. So far, nothing found inside or outside the site has helped archaeologists to provide any context. It's still considered to be an enigmatic find. The past few years have been kind to archaeologists with an interest in Celtic history. As well as the chariot discovery in Wales, the 2,500-year-old tomb of a Celtic prince has been found in the Champagne region of France. The remarkable gravesite has been hiding in plain sight in the middle of a busy business district for centuries and experts think it might help to shed light on the state of trade between European territories during the Iron Age. That's because some of the goods found within the tomb are Greek, some are French, and others appear to be Etruscan. The prince must have been known to enjoy a drink or two, because the most prominent of the goods in his grave was a wine cauldron made of bronze. At 130 feet across and featuring a 150 square foot chamber at its center, this is one of the largest burial sites of this period ever discovered. The prince himself was found at the center of the chamber, still sat in his chariot. At the time of his burial, places like Marseille and Champagne were establishing themselves as city-states, so this long-dead Celt may have been a local ruler. We're staying with the Celts for a moment because we have yet another incredible discovery to report. This astonishing shield found in the tomb of a Celtic warrior who'd lain buried in his chariot for more than 2,000 years, has been described as the most outstanding Celtic art discovery of the 21st century in the United Kingdom. It was found in late 2019, close to the town of Pocklington, Yorkshire. Aside from the elaborately decorated shield and the chariot, archaeologists also made the curious discovery of two ponies buried in a jumping pose. As is the case with the other Celtic burials we've looked at in this video thus far, the deceased, a man who was roughly 40 years old when he passed away, was almost certainly a regional leader. Aside from being an attractive artifact, the shield is notable because it appears 
to have had an offensive purpose to go with its defensive properties. At its center is a large, raised sphere, which was probably used for striking people at close range. Since its discovery, it's been taken away for full restoration and will eventually go on display at the British Museum. What do you call an armadillo shell as big as a car? A carmadillo! That might sound like a bad joke, but the discovery of these shells was no joke for the farmer who found them close to his land while leading his cows out to graze in Buenos Aires, Argentina in February 2020. According to Pablo Messinio, the first expert to arrive at the scene after being alerted by the farmer, these are the remains of creatures known as glyptodons, who roamed the earth some 20,000 years ago. The species is extinct, but is a relative of the modern-day armadillo. Very few of their shells have survived the passing of the centuries, but these particular shells made it thanks to the fact that they got stuck in the mud of a riverbed, which preserved them. Now they've been exposed, they're at risk of being damaged or disintegrating through exposure to the elements. So Messinio and his team have started the process of trying to extract them from their current location and take them somewhere safe. That's likely to be difficult. Even the lightest of the shells weighs a full ton. Ever since a series of tunnels was discovered below the streets of Edinburgh in Scotland, archaeologists and historians have wondered who built them and what they were used for. The latest theory is that they might have been an ancient druid temple, and that each of the tunnels was carved by hand. The tunnels are collectively known as Gilmerton Cove, and are at least 400 years old, but could be much older. As nobody knows for sure who built them, they've been connected to everything from people smuggling to witchcraft, and the activities of the legendary Knights Templar. Julian Spaulding, the former head of Glasgow Museum, now speculates that they were used by druids 2,000 years ago and were buried deliberately to protect their secretive society after the druids left the area. Druids were known for meeting in secret places far from general human habitation, with caves and woods typical choices. A secret underground temple would have been a perfect candidate. The druids of the time were also known for carrying out human sacrifices so that grisly practice might also have gone on right underneath this thriving modern Scottish city. When Professor Heinrich Frank of the Federal University of Rio Grande in Brazil found a series of tunnels beneath the small town of Novo Hamburgo during the early 2000s, he made it his life's work to find out which mysterious civilization built them. In 2018, he finally got his answer, and it came as a shock to him. Despite their appearance, these tunnels weren't created by human beings at all. Instead, they were dug out by a gigantic and long-extinct species of sloth. You can get a sense of the size of the tunnels from these pictures of average-sized people standing in them, so that tells you how enormous these ancient sloths must have been. To date, more than 1,500 tunnels have been found thus far, many of which lead on for hundreds of feet. The largest found so far is 2,000 feet long, has an average height of 6 feet, and varies in width between 3 and 5 feet. More than 12,000 metric feet of dirt must have been dug out and displaced to create this one tunnel alone. One single sloth couldn't have achieved this in a lifetime, so the creatures must have continued working on it for generations. The best guess of Heinrich and his team is that the sloths responsible were the size of African elephants and became extinct around 10,000 years ago. To prove this, he now needs to find some giant sloth skeletons. As hard a concept as it is to comprehend now, there was a time when coins didn't exist, and so other ways of defining the value of a trade had to be employed. In the Israel of 2,700 years ago, one such method was the use of limestone weights, like this one, which was found in October 2020. The artifact, which was found in Jerusalem, is a rare first temple period example of a two shekelim unit, as identified by the markings on its surface. The symbol is Egyptian for shekel, and the two neatly carved lines next to it indicates it's a double shekel weight. The records we have from the time tell us that double shekels weighed the equivalent of 23 grams, which is the precise weight of this limestone sphere. Quite how ancient artisans managed to cut and shape weights with such precision is unknown, but it would have taken the work of an extremely talented craftsperson. By using weights like this, 
Traders could ensure that the weight of the goods they received was consistent with the weight of goods they sold or multiples thereof. This would also have been a useful way of working out your tax bill. Back then, tax was a mere half shekel per year. Elsewhere in Israel, archaeologists marveled over the discovery of what appears to be an ancient copper workshop in the middle of the Negev desert in May 2020. The facility, which was found at Beersheba, is believed to be 6,500 years old. A furnace has been identified at the site and, to the best of anyone's knowledge, might be the oldest furnace ever found anywhere in the world. The time frame places the creation of the copper workshop in the Chalcolithic period. This has always been thought to be a relatively primitive time on Earth, so the discovery of a workshop in which a tin furnace was used to smelt copper ore is a surprising and enlightening find. We did already know that metalworking went on during this time, but nothing so advanced as this. The majority of the tools used in the era were still made from stone. Even more remarkably, the raw ore used in the furnace came from Wadi Finan in Jordan, more than 60 miles away from the workshop. This was a professional, carefully planned operation. It's thought that the workshop was built by the Gasulian people, although more evidence will need to be found before this can be stated as fact. The type of steel used in most manufacturing processes today is stainless steel, which is selected because it's resistant to rust. The substance is also known as chromium steel and is generally thought of as a relatively recent invention. That isn't the case. As of September 2020, we now know that chromium steel was invented in Persia more than 1,000 years ago. The Journal of Archaeological Science reports that the origins of stainless steel have been tracked to Shahak in Iran. It's there that the ancient manuscript, A Compendium to Know the Gems, was written by Abi Rehan Biruni, and within that manuscript is a basic set of instructions for creating the rust-resistant material. The text was written during either the 11th century at the latest, but could be a century older. Chahak's claim on the invention is further backed up by the recent discovery of two smithing slags in the area, both of which have been dated to the 12th century and contain evidence of crucible steel creation. The archaeological evidence is strong enough for this to be accepted as fact, but experts aren't sure why the steel didn't go on to be made anywhere else or why the science behind it appears to have been forgotten and then rediscovered again centuries later. Humans have enjoyed drinking wine for almost as long as they've enjoyed eating grapes. In September 2020, we got an indication of just how far back this practice goes when a 2,700-year-old wine press was discovered in Tel El Burak, Lebanon. The wine press, which was almost certainly built by the ancient Phoenicians, is exceptionally well-preserved. Archaeologists believe that Tel El Burak was founded by the people of nearby Sidon as a satellite town to provide them with agricultural products and other essential goods. And it seems that wine production was part of that bargain. The facility is a fairly rustic affair, consisting of a rectangular treading basin, a semicircular vat, and some protective walls made of ashlar blocks. They coated the finished product in a plaster made by mixing crushed, broken ceramics with lime, which created a water-resistant product. Once it was finished, it appears that it remained in use for several centuries. The Phoenicians are generally credited with the popularization of wine, which spread from their civilization across the Mediterranean and then on to North Africa and Europe. It might even be the case that this wine press was the very beginning of that process. Workers in China's Hunan province got a nasty shock recently when they unearthed an astonishingly well-preserved human body during a construction project in Anhua County. The male corpse is around 650 years old and is so well-preserved because of the combination of limestone and fine wood that was used to make his coffin, which became a preservative for his remains. While his identity will likely forever remain unknown, he was well cared for in death. He went to his grave dressed in fine fabrics, with a decorative fan placed on his chest. While it's a fascinating discovery from an archaeological point of view, the excavator operator who found it is unlikely to share that view. Chinese tradition holds that it's bad luck to open a coffin, and in this case, 
The coffin was broken open by the machinery before the worker even knew what was happening. Experts have been able to deduce from markings on the coffin that its occupant was a member of a family known as Wang. So, through that information and the possibility of obtaining DNA samples from the remains, it might even be possible to trace living members of his family, if they've survived the past few centuries. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!